Come out quickly and share your testimony. Double portion. Our names are Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Okeke. We serve in Living Faith Church here, Sanctuary Unit. We want to appreciate God and return all the glory for a glorious wedding on June 15, 2013. We have been believing God for marriage since 2010, but my, uh, my wife's parents refused because of cultural differences. But we kept believing God, and we came to this exalted ground, and we reported the matter to the God of Goshen. And as God will have it, every miracle marriage services we attended was drawing us close to our heart desire. Precisely July 2012, last year, God's servant gave a word that everything will work in our favor, and all the doors shall be opened, and they will call us. As God will have it, I told my, my, my wife, my fiancé then, that the parents will call us, and as God will have it in August, the Father sent for us and gave approval, and we began to prepare for the marriage. We began to prepare for the marriage, and it got to uh, this year, when we're about trying to get our marriage settled. There was nothing to show for it, but in April, God gave us a new job. I sowed my first fruit, uh, my first fruit seed, and one week after, the financial heavens opened. We got wedded gloriously in Living Faith Church, Sapele. God did everything by himself. When we were about to come back, we received news that our home, our home has been flooded. But when we came back, God restored everything and gave us a new and glorious apartment in Kubwa. We have come to return all the glory to God. Hallelujah to God alone be all the glory. Jesus, we say thank you. Praise the Lord. My name is Adetola Adeshina. I want to give glory to God for what I have done. In 2006, then I, when I joined the Living Faith Navy in Durumi, you know, it was a mantle day on Sunday. Then I was still small in faith. You know, after the service, when I got home, a call came from my village that my last born, Romad. I just shout. I said, no. I called the phone. I went inside, put my clothes, eat, sleep. Around 9 p.m. in the night, I come outside. I come outside and I wave my mantle and pray. I say, Lord, if you are the God of the commission, I want another testimony tomorrow morning by 9 p.m. in the 9 a.m. in the morning. You know, as God wants to make it, I just go inside and sleep. Around 8:30 to 9, I hear a call that my brother is restored. For me to confirm, I called them and I told them to give him the phone. Let me speak to him. And I speak to him about three weeks later and I'll tell him to come to Abuja, to come and see me. And I give glory to God. God is real. Are you happy at what you are seeing and what you are hearing? Let's put our hands together to the Lord who did the work. Praise the Lord. My name is Prince Jobu. I want to testify what God has done in my life. When I was 15 years, I don't know what happened to me. I started smoking, started disturbing my mommy, started giving my mom trouble. But on June 9, when I came to this church, I don't know what happened when the call or that call. I don't know how much I got to the altar here. So since then, I, I stopped all those things. I'm a changed person now. Thank God. Thank God for changing his life. You are next online in the name of Jesus. My name is Mrs. Fola Shadi Anyoda. I want to testify to the glory of God. 2011, I delivered a baby, but I lost the baby after three days of um, labor. Last year, I came here, I said, God, I want to deliver a baby myself. I got pregnant, and um, the day passed that I was supposed to deliver and I was to be operated on. So, a night before the day I was to be operated on, I have just little minor pain. I went to the hospital. They were like, Madam, the baby is coming out. I did not even push one push. I was like, God, so is this easy? And the baby came out alive and sound. I want to thank, give God all the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Praise the Lord. My name is Princess Olufinayo Adimule Brown. I'm giving this testimony on behalf of my father, the Obalukmeme of Ikweme, from Mundo State. My daddy has been critically ill because he did not allow the Ikweme people to be worshipping idols. Because of that, they said that he would not see this year, 2013, uh, Yam Festival Day. So somebody invited us to see the bishop last month. We met with the bishop, and the bishop prayed for him, anointed him, and today he is here. He's okay. We give glory to God. Hallelujah to Jesus alone. We give all the glory. Praise the Lord. My name is Shai Elizabeth, and I serve with the evangelism unit. I've come to give God all the glory. God has been faithful. For 13 years, I've been suffering all manner of afflictions, nightmares, academic failure. I worked so hard, but then everything was just, was, was just not working. Stagnation, even when I eventually graduated from school, um, stagnation at the verge of breakthrough. All the ev jobs, everything I tried. When breakthrough would come, there would be failure. And then my family had been having problems. My elder sister suddenly died. That's the first daughter. My elder brother died. My dad became really sick. And then I stumbled upon a book in a friend's room titled There's a Miracle in Your Mouth by John Austin. I read it and all of a sudden there was this supernatural faith that just came upon me and I began to speak. And then relations started coming to me to ask about the situation in my family. Even when they would ask other people and they would say the negative things, the way it's happening, I would speak positive. But they would keep pressing me to make me say negative, but then I wouldn't. I would have nightmares and a voice would come and call sicknesses over me. I would wake up and things would be happening and I would speak the word and it would disappear. But then... All of a sudden, that faith was attacked. It was seriously attacked. That I became afflicted with a spirit of fear that I was afraid of everybody and everything around me. And even my siblings that were not born again had more faith than I did. But I give God the glory that last Sunday, when um, our father, the bishop, said we should go, this is our week of restoration in seven folds, and then vengeance upon our enemies. I had a dream. I, heard, I saw people lined up in white garments, and a girl that was supposed to be my friend from school that I knew had been attacking me came to me. They had shaved her hair. She was one of them. I said, so you're going to allow them to sentence me? I said, that is what you deserve, and I'm not going to speak otherwise. And then I saw my aunties too. Hallelujah. After last Sunday's service, everything was restored back to her in the name of Jesus. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Double portion. My name is John Magaji. I'm privileged to serve with the ushering unit. 2010, I resigned an appo my appointment to join the company as I dearly desire. And uh, since then, I met somebody who has been the manager of that branch. It has, he, he made life so uncomfortable. And he was elevated to become the GM of that, the same company. And since that 2010, promotion will come. I was just like stagnant. Assistant, 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 assistant. Until this Saturday, I went for outreach, teaching, and talking about Sunday service on vengeance. Teaching vengeance also. After the outreach, we gathered and Pastor Oyebanji also declared vengeance, citing from Deuteronomy 32. I got home only to check my mail and found out there was a query to withhold my salary for June by the same GM. And I was now saying, Lord, I paid my tithe, and how can somebody hold my salary I'm going to pay tithe to you from? I came to church on Sunday with that conviction. And when the bishop came on the altar, the bishop said, until vengeance is wrought, comfort will not be in view. I key into it, and to the glory of the Lord, he said prophetically that you are going to work on Monday thinking of what to do. People are ganged up against you. They will, they will be removed for your sake. Tuesday, this is a testimony. On Tuesday, the GM resigned his appointment. I've returned to give glory to God. Hallelujah. Shall we all love, lift up our hands unto him and appreciate God for all the testimonies that we have had and that you are next online. Today is your turn. No one shall deny you. In the name of Jesus. We have 31 children to be dedicated. We have 27, 27 people who are celebrating their birthdays, four marriage anniversaries, 15 vehicles to be dedicated, four personally owned houses to be dedicated, and so many other things. God is a good God.
in Jesus' mighty name. Now, this is the order. First, all the children for dedication in this service will come forward. We are going to have them line up in front, and their well wishers also will come with them. And after we are through with that, we are going to invite all other people who have registered their name for Thanksgiving. They will come after we are through with the children who are here for dedication. So it's my privilege in this service to welcome all the parents to bring their children who are in this service for dedication and their well-wishers who have come to celebrate with them and the choir will minister. Let's all rise up as we honor Jesus with them in Jesus' mighty name. Choir. We have come to thank you, Jehovah Shammah. We have come to thank you for all you have done. We have come to thank you, Jehovah Shammah. We have come to thank you, Jehovah Jireh. We have come to thank you for all you have done. Hey, we have come to thank you, Jehovah Jireh. We have come to thank you for all you have done. We have come to thank you, Jehovah Nisi. We have come to thank you for all you have done. Hey, we have come to thank you, Jehovah Jireh. We have come to thank. We have come to thank you, Jehovah Shammah. We have come to thank you for all you have done. We have come to thank you, Jehovah Shammah. We have come to thank you for all you have done. We have come to thank you, Jehovah Shammah. We have come to thank you for all you have done. We Hallelujah! For all these wonderful blessings, let's put our hands together for Jesus. Please, those who are here with their babies, make sure you are in front. All those who have brought their babies, make sure you are in front. Please, the officials, to help them. Now, let's stretch forth our hands and begin to give God thanks for this baby that will be dedicated this morning. Begin to celebrate God. Except the Lord beauty has the labor and vendor beauty. It is not by power nor by might. God is the one that has done this. Let's give him all the glory. Let's give him all the praise. God is the one that brought about the conception. He saw them through gestation. After nine months, there was safe delivery. Mommy alive, baby alive, father alive. That is why we are here. Celebrate him and give him all the glory. Father in heaven, we thank you. We give you praise, O oh Lord. We honor and adore you. Blessed be your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have given thanks. And now, as the children are anointed now, Father in heaven, we declare that this oil becomes a seal over their lives and destiny in the name of Jesus. By this anointing, they bear in their body the mark of Christ. No sickness will trouble them. No disease will trouble them. No evil will trouble them. Kidnappers will not see them. Arm robbers will not see them. Evil will not see them. In the name of Jesus, by this anointing, we put them in the whole of God's hand. No devil will look at them in the name of Jesus. And talking about Jesus, the Bible says, And the child grew and walked strong in spirit, and the grace of God was upon him. We decree that by this anointing, these children will grow well. No complication, no stunted growth. The grace of God shall be upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. By this anointing, we declare they will increase in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and men. They will excel in the name of Jesus. That shall be unusual provision for their upkeep from now through primary, nursery, secondary, even to university level. They too will carry their own children in their hand. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. These children will remain a source of joy to their parents forever. 
parents, you will not weep over any one of them. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. As they dance back to their seat, I'm sure you brought in your dedication seat. You drop it and also the well wishers with them. Drop your seat and make sure you are dancing back, celebrating Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. Choir, let's go. Mama Ekele. Mama Ekele. Shine Kena. Mama Ekele. Shine Kena. Mama Ekele. 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 Shine Kena. Mama all others who are for their thanksgiving, you have registered our thanksgiving as they are dancing back. Begin to come forward, begin to come forward. All others who have registered their names for thanksgiving, begin to come forward. Wherever, wherever you are, choir. Nam na rekele chineke umugi ne nyege kele isuruke me. Nam na rekele chineke umugi ne nyege kele isuruke me. Chineke, umu gine nyege kele, isuru keme. Ekele, ekele. If you are coming, you can keep coming. I know God has done you well. Those who are in front and all those who are standing in the congregation, you have a reason to give God thanks. You have a reason to celebrate Him. You have a reason to thank Him. Because all through the month of June, it kept your going and your coming. So all of us here, right here in front by the altar, and those in the congregation, I want you to lift up your hand and lift up your voice. Like the one leper, with a loud voice. If you are grateful to God, and you are not the one that kept yourself up until today, lift up your voice and begin to give Him thanks. And all those in front, whatever you are thanking God for, let's begin to celebrate Him. Let's begin to thank Him for Him, the new cars, the marriage anniversaries, the new homes, the new businesses. Let's give him glory. Let's give him praise. Let's honor him. Let's adore him. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we honor you. We adore you. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Lord, you are the doer. We appreciate you, Lord. We give you glory and we give you praise. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Lord, we return again to say thank you. Because we know it has not been by our power nor by our might, it has been by your spirit. Not of him that will it, not of him that run it. You are the one that has shown us mercy. And that is why we are here today. Father, receive all our thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for protection and preservation. We thank you for all the numerous blessings of houses, of cars, of furnitures. Father, take all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Father, for the birthdays, marriage anniversaries that you have kept for many years, not allowing the enemy to break them down, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. And for these new marriages, we declare them blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Whatever we are thanking you for today, we shall not know sorrow about them in the name of Jesus. They will all remain sources of joy forever in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we have come like the one leper, Whatever we are thanking you for today shall receive perfection, shall receive increase, and your name shall be glorified. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hey. So whatever seed you have in your hand, you are going to drop it. And all of us also, also in the congregation, the basket will be passed around. You drop your seed, celebrating Jesus for his goodness in Jesus' mighty name. As you are dancing back, please dance unto the Lord with the whole of your strength and the whole of your mind. And I believe God 
you are returning next month with a greater blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Choir, let's sing. Jiro, 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 Geneme. Jiro, 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 Geneme. Jiro, 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 Geneme. Jiro, 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 Geneme. Jiro, 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 Geneme. For all you have done for me, I will praise you.
everywhere I go, 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 now miracle they follow me, everywhere I go, now signs are wonders, everywhere I go, everywhere I go, everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, everywhere I go, everywhere I go, my miracle they follow me. Everywhere I go, my signs are wonders. I know, I know, I I I I I He was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Now, in their time, a Samaritan was a stranger. The nine were not strangers, they were used to it. Now, what is it? This is number saying they were used to it. But the stranger said, I never see this kind of God before. Now wonder, 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 wonder. This God now why? Oh. 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 I never see. I never see. Wonder, wonder. Amen. I walk, I walk, no one, no one. I sigh, 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 no one, no one. There's no one. Amen. The one leper returned and said, this kind God, oh, I never see Hallelujah. The one left for return and said, The things that are impossible, things are possible. That's what I 
Thanksgiving has made you whole. Hallelujah. There is always a rising for everyone who engage in praise. He fell on his face and Jesus said, you have done the right thing, arise. Go your way. You are made whole. So I say to you all who have truly offered thanks to God today, Arise. You will no longer go down. Arise. Go your way. You are made whole. Arise. Go your way. You are made whole. Arise. Go your way. You are made whole. Wave your hand in appreciation of your God. 
Worthy. Now, before you take your seat, please bring out your prayer card. And uh, the, your prayer card for June 2013, for the month that is just ending. Has God answered you? Well, and the Prayer Reach Project 2013, we will be thanking God for all the souls that were saved in the month. And as a matter of fact, from the beginning of the year, all the souls we have prayed for and that are saved, and then all the requests you have made that God has answered, including the one that Satan is telling you has not happened. Slap the devil. Tell him that the thing has happened. It has happened. You are only envious of me. It has happened. Lift up the two cards and appreciate God. Appreciate God. If there is no card with you, lift up your hand and thank God. Thank God with your two hands for all of the blessings of double portion. Appreciate Him. Appreciate Him. Appreciate Him. Appreciate Him. Appreciate Him. Everybody, give God the glory. Give God the thanks from the depth of your heart for your healing, for your deliverance, for your family, for every blessing. Thank Him from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Father, we thank you again. We give you glory and honor. We are grateful to you. In Jesus' precious name. You are blessed. Please let me say this for emphasis. Every last Sunday of the month is our special end of the month Thanksgiving Day. And we should always celebrate it. It is the day of our returning to thank Him. And every time you are coming, you come with a joyful heart. You come with a grateful heart. You come with a singing heart. And then you come with a dancing body. Amen. And then you come with handful of seed. Seed of thanksgiving. Different from your, you know, worship offering. Just to say to Jesus, we thank you. Hallelujah. I want to sing a song again. I want the choir to, you know, amen. You see, there is something about singing in our culture. You know, I had God's servant said that your culture is rich enough to reach God. Your culture is rich enough to reach God. You don't have to sing uh, the way they sing, the Western way, and squeeze your nose. Sing it raw, as it is in your culture. Amen. <laughs> danceable, not uh, jumping and, you know, danceable, you rejoicing, the Komale type. Amen. Moti Roba, Mi Oriri Jesuri. Moti Roba, Mi Oriru Jesuri. Koyi Popa Da, Ojo Titi Aye, Ajinde Ati O Bagbo Go Go. Oh, Moti Roba, Mi Oriru Jesuri. Amen. That song says, I have seen several things before. I have not seen the type of Jesus. He has not changed position. He rules forever. He is the resurrection and life. He takes all the glory. I have seen several things before. I have not seen the kind of Jesus. Motin Roba, mi oriru Jesu yiri. Motin Roba, mi oriru Jesu yiri.
another big hand and take your seat. <laughs> Welcome your neighbors with congratulatory message for seeing the end of the month of June. The first half of the year is gone. To him alone be the glory forever. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' wonderful name. This day, you will encounter strange power. I thought I had your expectant, amen. This day, you will encounter the strangest power of your life. You've had testimonies in this service. In the first service, we have some mind-boggling testimonies. Ten years of prostate cancer healed by the power of God. 35 years of miracle happening in marriage and all sorts of testimonies. God is changing situation. A woman who 15 years pregnant, held down by the forces of hell, destroyed after last Sunday, covenant day of vengeance. The person responsible ran mad and died. All manner. All manner of testimonies. You remember the testimony from Faith Tabernacle of a child that was stolen? The person who stole the child, afflicted with all kinds of diseases, and, you know, including blindness, total blindness. Child restored. God is working wonders in our midst. We must not pretend as if we don't know. That's why we are celebrating him. The only way to retain God is to celebrate him. God goes only where he is celebrated. That's why there is no method you can make God to move to leave this place. There is no method you can use to move God to leave this place. He loves this place. Oh. God loves this church. You know why? We always praise him. Even you as human beings, you go only to where they are talking about you. That's the way God behaves. He comes here every day, no matter how angry you are with this church. God will never, he won't leave this place, oh. He won't leave this place. He has decided he won't leave this place. <laughs> Why? We always give him what he wants. There are some of you, there is no method. You, there is a particular restaurant you go to. Why? Because the thing you want is what they are serving there. You don't go to where they are serving leaves and serving uh, all kind of, uh, where they are serving proper apple or amala. That's where you go to. <laughs> Especially if you are an Oyop or your man. Go to where they are serving Amala and uh, Ewudu, that's your joint. We are giving to God what He wants, that's why He will never leave this place. The same thing will happen in your home in the name of Jesus. You'll be glad to know that next Sunday we are starting our third service. God has been bringing multitude upon multitudes. Our first service is the past several weeks has been filled to the overflow. And for that reason, we want to create room, um, adjust the service time, 6.30, the first service, 8.45, the second service, and 11 a.m., the third service. Please attend the one that is most convenient for you. Now, second service is going to start at 8.45. If you can't catch up, uh, 8.45. If you can't catch up with it, you just wait till 11. There's no point coming in between so you adjust your time, and God will honor you as you do so in Jesus' name. We have handbills to that effect. Ushers, please quickly pass copies around. Just take a copy, and it is captioned, Now is your turn for a turn around. Now is your turn for a turn around. Now, as you are reading this, I'd like you to read it to yourself. Now is my turn for a turn around. And the evidences, the references are behind. As you are reading the testimonies of others who came in a week, two weeks, three weeks, and their lives have been changing, look, I'd like you to get very angry and tell yourself, things must change for me. Things must change for me. Say with me, now is my turn for a turn around. Say it again, now is my turn for a turn around. It shall be so for you. By next Sunday, some of you are sharing your testimonies. As you are stepping into the third service, you are stepping into your next level. I want you to take it as prophetic also. 
If the church is climbing to the top service, then I am climbing to my next level. Is that what somebody is believing? If the church is getting into the top service, where are you getting to? Your next level. As we are starting next Sunday, your own is starting this week. Can't do it now. You do it by the time we are closing. When you are in love with God, you become one with God. Love for God makes you one with God. Love cannot be separated. The reason why I cannot be separated from my wife is because love bound us together. Whatever love binds, no one can separate. When marriage is broken, it's because love is no longer there. Love is the cord that binds people together. Love. Love. That's why everything that breaks down is an indication of absence of love. Love is the mender. Love is the builder. When you are in love with God, you are one with God. First John chapter 4, verse 16. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. So loving God is becoming one with God. You must make your choice to love him, because love is not by force. Just like you choose who to marry out of love, you make your choice to love God. God does not force things on people. God deals with willing minds if ye be willing and obedient. Willing and obedient. It's your choice. Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? He asked him three times because he wanted Peter to be sure of what he's saying. Do you love me? Peter said, Master, you know all things. Check me out. I love you with all of my heart. John 21, 15 to 17. But love increases with the power of the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. So the deeper you are in the Spirit, the deeper you are in love. The deeper you are in the Spirit, the deeper you are in love. So the Holy Spirit makes you become anointed lover. And when you now mix that with the Word of God, when God's word and God's spirit gain access into you, you do not only become a lover of God, you become an addicted lover of God. Revelation makes you an addicted lover of God. The word of God intoxicates you to love God the more. You become an addicted lover of God. God becomes someone you cannot do without. God becomes someone you cannot do without. You cannot do without him. That's why David was always panting after God. Oh Lord my God, early will I seek thee. My soul longeth for thee. My heart and my flesh cried out for the living God. He was always panting after God. Lord, remember David, how that is swear that he will not give sleep to his eyes, nor slumber to his high lids, until he has found a place for the God of Jacob. He was always crazy for God, just like in genuine marriage relationship. When the husband and wife are apart, they miss themselves. 
they, they are always eager to go home. When I finish work, I'm eager to go home. Why? Because love is waiting for me at home. In the same way, you will always be eager to go to the house of God. You see, when they are begging you to go to church, it's because you don't have love for God in your heart. If you love him, you won't need persuasion. Believe me. If you love God, you won't need persuasion to go to the house of God. That's my family. That's my house. I must go there. Our children are always eager to return home. Why? Love is waiting for them. If you are not eager to go back home, something is wrong there. That's what love does. May you become an anointed and an addicted lover of God. Yeah. Did you say amen to that? Yeah. Love is very vital. Love is crucial. Love is capital. Love is fundamental. Love is catalyst to the faith. Love empowers you to praise. Lovers of God are praisers of God. Lovers of God are praisers of God. Now, thanksgiving is appreciation of the act of God. But praise is the celebration of the person of God. Those who love God celebrate God. They celebrate God. I am praising God because of who he is, not because of what he has done for me, not because of what he has given to me. I have been a constant praiser of God. When I had a jalopy that someone ate K, man, you can't beat me. Very powerful car. The fenders are off. The dashboard is automatic. It needed no air conditioner. It's wind conditioned. Praising God. When I had one coat, I never stopped praising him. When I had one pair of shoes, the shoe was tired, mended it, it opened, vulcanized it, it opened. It was tired, but I couldn't retire it because I was no something to <laughs> Hallelujah. Celebrating God for who he is. That's why David says, seven times would I praise thee, O Lord. Psalm 119, He was an addicted praiser of God. Psalm 119, verse 164. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of your righteous judgment. When I see you complain against God, it shows to me that you don't love God. You don't love him. You don't love him. Real lovers are non-complainers. Real lovers are non-complainers. Real lovers are non-complainers. Real lovers are non-complainers. If you truly love God, you will not murmur against God. If you truly love God, you will not accuse God. If you truly love God, you will not abuse God. If you truly love God, you will not be offended in Him. It empowers praise. What more? Love for God empowers a life of consecration. If you love God, you will consecrate your life to Him. If you love God, you will not allow anything to tamper with your consecration. The word consecration means separated unto God. Separated unto God. Separated unto God. The Bible tells us from Romans chapter 13, from verses 8 to 10. He said, hold no man anything but to love. To love one another. To love. Love is the key to all depth. When you love people, you don't owe people. To love one another. For he that loveth hath fulfilled the law. 
He that loveth hath fulfilled the law. Verse 9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not be a false witness, thou shalt not covert. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Therefore, love worketh no heal to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Can you see that? If you love your friend, you will not touch his wife. You will not. Somebody is traveling and he said, my friend, please help me check on my wife to see how she is doing. If you truly love, you won't touch your wife's friend. If you truly love, you won't touch your neighbor's daughter. If you truly love, you will not hunt after your friend's husband. Love. If you truly love, you will not cheat your business partner. Somebody is traveling and he said, please keep my car for me. And then you started cruising the car until the car is wrecked. That is if you didn't sell it. <laughs> law is the fulfilling of the law. You will not need the commandments if you are living in love. The commandment is inferior to the law. You won't need God to tell you not to commit adultery. If you love, you will so love him that you don't want to even think adultery. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Shout hallelujah. That's why Daniel proposed in his heart not to, not to defile himself with the king's maid. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. He proposed in his heart. They told them to bow before the idol. Daniel said, never. I love God. Never. His friends came and touched him and said, Daniel, just pretend as if you are passing. Just do like this. <laughs> Daniel said, you don't know anything. My lover is watching me. I will not bow. I will not eat what others are eating. I will not touch what others, what others are touching. I will not defile myself with the king's men. If you love God, you won't be stealing government money. If you love God. If you love God, you will love your nation. If a pastor loves God, he will not be robbing church members in the name of prophesying on them. Empty, harassing, intimidating prophecy so that church members can bring offering for him. You see, God just told me you have to make sacrifice. Sacrifice. You know, God doesn't speak to me anyhow. When I saw you, that's what God told me. You have to make sacrifice. Sacrifice. To make sacrifice. <laughs> and the ignorant believer, the dummy believer, goes to close his account because somebody said to you, you have to make sacrifice. Let God speak to you now. Are you not a child of God? Anything you don't see us tell you, as your true pastor. Don't let others deceive you. I don't know how many just get stupid. Permit me to use that word. People rob you and after they have robbed you, you will now come back to us to be praying for you. What, what kind of nonsense is that? Because there is no love. Some years back, a lady came to me and said, Sir, I just lost my job and I feel led to come and sow the last salary I collected to you. I said, What? I said, I sow it back to you now. In the name of Jesus, you will not suffer any form of dryness. I sow it back to you now. Love won't let me take it. I was traveling on a Thursday and one woman came to me and said, Sir, I bring this water for you as the Bible commands, that he that giveth water to a prophet shall receive the prophet's reward. And I looked at her. 
I said, there's a miracle you need. I bless this water back and give it to you. That's the way love operates. No, love does not oppress people. Love is not looking for what to hunt and what to get from people. If you want to know a true pastor, he's not the one that begs you for things. He's not the one that asks you for things. He's not the one that puts pressure on you for things. He's not. He's the one looking after your well-being. He's not looking for things from you. He's looking for you. You know what Paul said? He said, we desire you and not yours. You and not yours. You and not yours. Shout hallelujah. By the grace of God, in my short pastoring life, just about 27 years now, I have never asked any church member for one thing or to do something for me to rob or defraud or cheat. Two weeks ago, uh, in our church in um, Dallas, and one couple whom I knew, who my wife and I knew way back in 1990 were there in the service. He was a lecturer in Cardinal Polytechnic. I was under 30 then. And this man came to me and said, Sir, I want to be washing your clothes. And he was very serious. He said, Can you give me the privilege of washing your clothes? And I said to him, When I'm ready, I will call you. 23 years is past. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet to wash my cloth. I'm not ready yet. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Love empowers you to live a consecrated life. A consecrated life. A consecrated life. If you love God, you will be holy unto God. Joseph said, how can I do this thing and sin against my God? My master believes in me. He committed everything to me except his wife. I cannot touch his wife. The wife said, touch me. He said, no, I cannot touch you. She said, free of charge. He said, no, I cannot touch you. I want to live my life free. <laughs> and when the woman pressed on it, Joseph, Joseph looked this way, looked that way. Where is door? There is no door close by. Where is window? Man, broke the window. Shaga. <laughs> Why? Consecration kept him off. Consecration kept him off. If you love God, you will abstain from all appearances of evil. That's what love does. Job so loved God that he will not accuse God. He was empowered to live a life that is consecrated to God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. How else do you prove that you love God? You prove that you love God by giving unto God and unto his cause. I said in the first service, true lovers are real givers. True lovers are real givers. If you love, you will give. Love is expressed via giving. Solomon loved the Lord. He gave. First Kings chapter 3, verse 3. God so loved the world, he gave. John 3, 16. David so loved the Lord, he gave. First Chronicles chapter 29, Verses 3 to 5. Love is expressed via giving. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 8. He said, This you do to prove the sincerity of your love. The sincerity of your love. You give to prove the sincerity of your love. Love is insincere without giving. It's insincere without giving. Love is insincere without giving. Love is fake if it does not give. David so loved God, he wanted to build the house for God. God said, David, you can't build. David said, okay, can I prepare the materials? Can I prepare the materials? 
True lovers of God always initiate giving. They always initiate giving. Now listen, people who don't give don't do so, not because they lack, but because they don't love. They don't love. When you love to give, God will put it in your hand. He will put it in your hand. Actually, giving begins from the soul. For the liberal soul, the liberal soul, the liberal soul, giving begins from the soul, only expressed through the hand. Your hand is not a giving hand because your soul is not a liberal soul. When your soul becomes liberal, your hand will become a giving hand. If it is in your heart, God will put it in your hand. If it is in your heart, God will put it in your hand. If it is in your heart, God will put it in your hand. For a believer to be pursued to pay his tithe, he doesn't love God. He don't love him. That's why you are not paying your tithe to him. You can't give one ten to the one who gave ten ten to you. <laughs> you don't love him. If you love him, you will give one ten to the man who gave you ten ten. Shout hallelujah. You are blessed. If you love God, you will love what he loves. You will love what he, what does God love? God so loved the world. He loved the people of the world that he gave. If you love God, you will love the people of the world. You will love to see them saved. You will love to have them saved. You will love their salvation. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. God is not slow concerning his commandments, his promises. He's not slack. Concerning his promises, as some men can't slackness, but he's long-suffering towards all, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is always panting for souls to be saved. If you truly love God, you will be panting for souls to be saved. Shout hallelujah. Particularly in this season of ingathering, your soul must be panting every day to see souls saved. Every day you must be panting for souls to be saved. Your dream must be how to get more people saved, how to get them into church, how to depopulate hell and populate heaven. Let your soul be panting for souls to be saved. Let your soul be panting for souls to be saved. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. I made a vow before God, no week will pass, especially in this harvest season, without me bringing souls to him. So when I came back from my trip, even though late yesterday, I still went out on personal evangelism, stood by the roadside, and the people were passing. I was talking to them, and they were getting saved. A number of them were in church this morning, getting saved, getting saved, God touching them, getting saved, God touching them. I want to do what God likes. God will like you if you do what he likes. He will like you. If you do what God likes, God will like you. If you keep it commandment, he will turn you into a commander. That's why when I pray, he answers me. Why? I've obeyed him. He that disobeys the law, his prayer shall be an abomination to the law. His prayer shall be an abomination. Shout hallelujah. Lift up your hand and receive grace to love God truly from your heart. To love God truly from your heart. Receive grace to love God truly from your heart. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. If you have your handkerchief here or any of your clothing material, put it on the floor before you. I'll be speaking life to you and to those materials right now. Let me begin by saying that God is a scientist. That may sound awkward to many people. But if you know the definition of science, uh, it won't create a problem for you. What is science? Science is a discovery of how things work. Science is a discovery of how things work. So knowing how God works is knowing about God and his process. 
Science is about a process. That's why in many scientific experiments, they talk to you about process. The aim, the method, the observation, and then the derivation, and then the conclusion. God is a God of method. God is a God of process. That is why we can learn of his ways. God is not mystic. God is a procedural God. That's why it is easy for us to learn about him. God is not a gimmick. He's not a corner corner God. Otherwise, nobody will know him. And Moses knew the ways of God. He knew how God works. That's why every time a miracle is needed, Moses knew what to do. One of the ways by which God works is through material objects. For instance, Jesus showed to us the law of contact and transmission. You know that we have that in science? Contact and transmission. What does that mean? He will lay hands on the sick and healing virtue will flow through his hand for their healing. Contact and transmission. And he said to us, you shall lay hand on the sick and power will flow through you to make them recover. We also know about the law of speech and delivery. You shall have whatsoever you say. You say it to see it. Everything about God is process. He said, open wide your mouth and I will feel it. But my people say we will not open, so they suffer. Close your mouth, shut down your destiny. Open your mouth, open up your life. And I want my life to open, so I open my mouth. If you are so concerned, close your own mouth. We also have the law of battery. In science, battery is a form of power storage. And then we have the handkerchief and apron and all that physical material that becomes spiritual batteries, spiritual batteries that we use to collect power. The battery in your telephone is used to collect power that the telephone needs to run. So what do you do? You, when it runs down, you bring the battery to the power source and connect it. And power flows into it for 30 minutes, for one hour, two hours, for as long as you want it. In the same way, what you are doing this morning is to collect more power through this storage facility. Are you there? And there are individuals appointed, ordained of God to be these power carriers. They carry power. They transmit power everywhere they go to. So when you connect with them, you contact the power so that you can use it for your benefit. Some years back, I visited a home and for courtesy, I removed my shoe before I entered the main sitting room uh, as it was required in that area, in that place. And one little girl, out of curiosity, wanted to see the people that were sitting. Uh, that were seated. She opened the door, and according to her, she saw me, and she closed the door back. And saw several shoes and said, ah, which shoe is likely to be this man's shoe? She was confused. All the shoes were good shoes. And she said to herself, the best thing to do is to put my leg in all these shoes. <laughs> By whatever means, I must have put my leg in its own. And so she was entering one shoe to another. And what was the effect? She has suffered five years of ulcer. Five years of ulcer. Upon putting the legs in my shoes, the ulcer disappeared. What does that mean? It means that that shoe was a spiritual battery containing healing. Containing healing. So when the sick touches the shoes, sickness says, 
I have no more hope. I have to go. It swallows up the sickness. One man had accident. And his tender, the tender, was caught. And that means there is no more power here. So he couldn't wear shoes for many years. He couldn't wear shoes for many years. And according to him, on one strange day, he put his leg in my shoe. And the following day, the following Sunday, I saw him wearing shoes. Very beautiful shoe with gold in front. I said, this is what the devil, he was angry that you are wearing gold shoes. <laughs> he came out free by contacting the power. By contacting the power. I am speaking to you and to your materials in your hand. And this ground is a ground of power. By whatever means, you are taking back home spiritual batteries today. Yeah. Did I hear your amen? Yeah. One woman met a man of God and said, Sir, my old man is a drunkard. I want him to stop drinking. And this man said, Well, I can't follow you to your home. A drunkard may think I'm chasing his wife. But do you have an handkerchief there? And the woman said, Yes, bring the handkerchief. And he took the handkerchief and cast out the spirit of drunkenness from the husband and told her, go and place it under his pillow. And she went and placed it under the pillow. The husband woke up the following day, as usual. He was a dead drunkard. He would drink in the morning, drink at break time, and finally settle down for the rest of the day after work. So he was going to work in the morning. He stopped by in the bar to take a drink. He became bitter. Maybe it's too early. At break time, he went and drank in the first place. Uh, what's happening here? Have they changed their you know, uh, you know, uh, menu here? Went to another place. It was bitter. Went to the other place. Uh, he said, well, when I finish work, I will revenge. Go back after work from one place to another. He was tasting. It was bitter. He was tasting. It was bitter. He got back home. The wife said, what's happening? You came back home early today. He said, I discovered that they want to charm me. They want to, you know, charm me everywhere I went to. They want to poison me. They want to poison me. So I decided to return home. The power of God went into it. To confirm Acts 19, 11, and 12, out of the body of Paul, the apostle, and Christ and Abraham were taken to cast out devils. And you know, drunkenness is a devil. It's a spirit. That's why they call the drink spirits. Spirits. Amen. The champagne, the whatever, they call them spirit. Those of you who are experienced before, you know what I'm talking about. You are now doing as if you didn't know anything about it before. <laughs> they call them spirit. Spirit. So anytime you are drinking whiskey, you are drinking <laughs> spirit. <laughs> you are drinking demonic spirit. So after drinking, it starts charging you. <laughs> you drink kankai, you drink burukutu, you drink everything. That spirit is cast out of anyone having it right now. Did you hear one testimony this morning? This boy said, for six years, I've been uh, smoking and all of that. He said, I didn't know what pushed me to the altar. They said, go, 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 go. go. They said, do you want to? say, yeah, well, why not? Let's go, let's go. <laughs> Something in the atmosphere charged him. So move, come on, move. Move, come on, Move. Move. <laughs> I don't like it, but I have to go. I have to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. That power is here this morning. Yeah. How do you explain somebody has been drinking and smoking for 12 years and came to church one day and cannot smoke again and cannot drink again? The atmosphere to charge. Yeah. Amen. I told God last week in my prayer, I said, Lord, I don't want to be a fine preacher. I want to be a fired preacher. Amen. I don't want to preach fine message. I want to preach fire message. I'm a failure if my preaching is not touching your heart. All of you should sign a memorandum to sack me if my message is not touching your heart again. And I, I mean it. All of you should get to the church. Raise your leaders. And write, all we are saying... We don't need you again. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
If you don't sack me, I will resign. <laughs> but that day will never come. Because on fire at all times. And that's what you are receiving now. You see, when somebody prays for you, it is what he has, he gives to you. When Samuel prayed for Saul, Saul became a prophet. Because of the prophetic grace upon Samuel, the grace came upon Saul. That's why you should be careful who lay hands on you. That's why you should be careful under whose ministration you, you sit down. If you are under a sick pastor, this sickness will follow you. Peter said to the cripple, look on us. Can you see crippleness in our leg? He said, come on, stand up. Stand up. And the man stood up. You are not crippled. I cannot be crippled. You are not crippled. I cannot be crippled. And then he started jumping and leaping and falling after Peter. That's how you'll be following us in breakthroughs. That's how you'll be following us in dominion. The whole essence of this morning's service is to transfer to you what is working in our hands. If you are not a miracle worker, I will never be happy. I will never be happy. I want to see all of you not looking for miracle, but generating miracle. You'll be, people will be touching your cloth the way they are touching my cloth. To be here. Somebody says, see, that's what I don't like. How can a, a, a human being be saying that they should be touching his cloth and they will be healed? I said, the reason they are not touching you is because you are not carrying virtue. <laughs> I don't ask people to come and touch me. They perceive that I have virtue. So they struggle to touch me. So if you're angry that they are touching me, they are not touching you because you don't carry virtue. You are useless to them. If you don't have virtue, you will not have value. If you don't have virtue, you will not have value. Today, I release upon you the forces at work in this commission responsible for breakthroughs responsible for dominion responsible for breakthroughs responsible for sound health receive it in the name of Jesus you are blessed So we see the mystery of impartation communicated through the garment of Jesus, Luke 6, 4. They sought to touch him, Luke 6, 19. They sought to touch him, and as many as touched him were made whole, Luke 6, 19. The whole multitude sought to touch him. They sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. All. All can partake of it. Three million people partook of the power upon Moses. Three million people. They drank the same water. They were under the same cloud. They were on the bowl. They were on hot table. Moses passed through Red Sea. They passed through with him. Do you know the mystery of impartation is that anything the imparter is able to do, the impartee is able to do. Elijah passed through Jordan. Elijah also passed through Jordan. What am I saying? Anything you see us enjoy, you have a right to enjoy. So you may as well be telling the devil, if you can't put it on my pastor, you can't put it on me. Say it to his face. If you cannot put on my pastor, you cannot put on me. We had a testimony in the first service. A woman had been afflicted with 15 years of infection in her womb. 15 years. And she went back to the doctor because she had me say, go back to where they check you up and tell them to check you that you don't have it again. And she got back and said to the doctor, my bishop said that you should check me again, that I don't have it. Ah. The doctor was very angry. He said, the, 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 my machine, uh, do you mean my machine is not working? He said, just check me. By the time they checked high again, 15 years infection, shot. Why? Because the person who prayed for her does not have it. Does not have it. If they told you you have cancer, tell them it's nonsense. Nonsense. 
cancer in this body? Where did it enter through? Nonsense. Nonsense. Hallelujah. If you sleep and there's one careless movement in your room, one demon. No. If I open my eyes, I, I, if I catch you, I, nonsense. And then you change gear and sleep on. <laughs> you are blessed. What do you need to do? You just put your faith on the line. Put your faith on the line. How? If it can work for my spiritual fathers, it can work for me. If the mantle can divide Jordan by the hand of my master, Elijah, it will divide it more by my hand. That's why when Elijah asked Elijah, what do you want? Ah, Elijah said, I want double. This kind of thing, I want double. I want double. And Elijah said, well, no problem. It's free for all. It's open to all. It's unlimited. It is immeasurable. Each person desires what he wants. He took it, and it worked for him. Now stretch your hands here. This your hand will not beg again. This your hand will be upon the neck of your enemies. This your hand will be signing checks in millions and billions. This your hand becomes healing hands. Sir. This your hands will not labor in vain again. Whatsoever you lay this hands on to do shall prosper. Pick the mantle from the floor. Say with me, this is power. This is power. Say again, this is power. This is power. One more time, this is power. this is power. I want you to demonstrate it when you get home or anywhere you go to. You wave it in the air. You strike as the Holy Ghost inspires you to do so. You tie it to anything that should work. As the Holy Ghost inspires you to do so, we may not tell you what to do with it. Elijah didn't tell Elisha that when you are returning, strike Jordan. No, he was just returning. I said, man, Jordan, you are here. Are you sure you are there? Wait for me, I'm coming. He went and took the mantle. Shoop! And then Jordan said, if not for this mantle, if not for this mantle, Say with me, if not for this man too. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody came here, a new person in the church, and he was in the impartation service like this someday, and according to him, his trailer got stuck. Nobody could move this trailer out. They call the, you know, uh, what do you call it? This uh, machine that lifts out with vehicles. Eh? Crane, towing vehicle. The thing didn't tow. He took the mantle and rubbed the tire. He said, trailer, move. Move. And then they started it, and the mantle towed what, what toy machine could not do. The mantle towed it out. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. This power will work wonders in your life. I must let you know I'm a product of this prophetic blessing. And what I have, I give unto you. I'm riding on prophetic wings. I welcome you to the same prophetic wings. I welcome you to the same prophetic wings. In the name of Jesus. Give God a big shout of faith. Please get seated get seated for a while, we'll soon pray, but before we pray, you must be a son of God and a son of the prophet for prophetic grace to work on you. You must be born again. Jesus called his disciples and he gave them power. He called the disciples, not strangers, not outsiders, his disciples, and he gave them power. If you are not born again, you don't have access to his power. As many as received him to them, gave you power to become the sons of what you become is a function of your status in Christ. A lot of people are seated here this morning. You have not given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. 
you need to quickly do that right now. You know yourself very well. You know yourself very well. Wherever you are seated right now, you are not sure you are born again, you are not sure Jesus is in your heart, and you want to receive him now. Why don't you open up your heart to him and let him be your Lord and Savior? Wherever you are, stand to your feet right now. I want to be born again. I want Jesus in my life. Stand up quickly. Stand up. Stand up. You'll know yourself. Be sincere to yourself. Don't let the devil deceive you. God bless you. More people are standing up. Church, let's clap our hands some more for the Lord. Hallelujah. There are some individuals, before now, you are an addicted lover of God. You so love God, but now you don't know where that love has gone to. Now people have to beg you and persuade you to go to church, to pray, to read the Bible. You need a reconnection. You have been disconnected. You need a reconnection now. Wherever you are, God is also touching you. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet and make your decision for Jesus. Get back up with Jesus. God bless you. More people are standing up right now. God bless you. You are getting restored back to the faith. Now, all of you standing up, and those of you that will join them, pick your Bible, and whatever you came to church with, including any child, if you come with a little child, whatever you came to church with, you start coming to the altar here right now. Come and rededicate your life to Jesus. Come and dedicate your life to him right now. God bless you. Church, keep clapping as they are coming. Wonderful people. Get excited. You can't tell me that you cannot clap again. Clap for the Lord, everybody. Come quickly. Come quickly. Don't leave anything behind. God bless you. Church, get more excited. Get more excited. Get more excited. What a day. What a blessing. What a joy. What a day. What a joy. What a blessing. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name. Next Sunday is our prophetic advancement service. Prophetic advancement. You know, the Bible tells us they prospered and they went forward by the prophecy of Zechariah, the son of Edo. Our prayer banquet commencing next Sunday is a prophetic banquet time. I want the ushers to please help circulate special invitation prayer card to church members right now please pick copies that you will use to invite people to come specially to church please pick your copies in our cell fellowship on saturday we'll be having the prayer banquet there as well i'm sure some special cards will be given out for that purpose too but this one is for next sunday and make sure you follow up the individuals to come with you next sunday if you wish, you put in an envelope and package it specially, the way you package some special gift for your friends and for your acquaintances and for dignitaries that you want to uh, feel honored. Please do the same and God will honor you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. There are some individuals who are still seated. You are watching right now. Others have left you behind. You know right there you don't belong to where you are seated. You should be in front here. You are still seated there. The power of Jesus set you free right now. I break every spirit of indecision from you and I command that you take a step right now to surrender your life to Jesus. Wherever you are, you are seated there. You need to be in front there. Stand up and come on here quickly. Stand up, come on here quickly right now. They are coming. Clap your hand for Jesus, somebody. I can see some people standing up right now to come. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. If you are there, you need to be in front here. All shall make sure you give these cards out. Some hands are being raised up. If you have need for these cards, invitation card for the prayer banquet, please raise your hand. And I want ushers, please, wherever you have extra, you just move, 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 please. Wherever you have extra, nothing should be left behind. Everything should come out now, please. God is a good God. Now, all of you in front here, I congratulate you for your decision this morning. You are making the greatest decision of your life. You will never regret it in the name of Jesus. All of you in front here, let me ask you to please bow your heads in prayer. Bow your heads, everybody in front here, and lift up your right hand. Bow your heads, lift up your right hand, and pray this simple prayer with me. Say with me, Dear Jesus.